The year is 1932. Lincoln offered a plethora of different bodies and worked with many different coach builders to offer no less than 37 different body styles. You could literally have it your way. Lincoln would also make an all new power plant, the V12, and split the Model K line into the KA and KB models. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. The automotive channel that brings you cars that never get covered. The goal is to cover every car from every American brand from 1930 through 1964 and cars outside of those parameters, of course, that never got the time of day. History, specs, design, most importantly, we show what these cars are like. Post between four and five episodes each week with engine episodes on Wednesdays. If that sounds of interest, a channel that you will totally dig, Subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. According to the calendar, spring has sprung. If you have a car in your personal collection, or maybe you're affiliated with a museum that has cool cars that you'd like to feature on the channel, drop me a line at what underscore it's underscore like at Yahoo. I know, Yahoo, when is the last time that you heard anybody have a Yahoo account? Dot com. And I am especially looking in the Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, Eastern Indiana, Southern Michigan. I'd go to New York State and surrounding areas. Be sure to drop me a line if interested. 1932 Lincoln model lineup was broken down into two models, the KA, which rides a wheelbase of 136 inches powered by 125 horsepower, 384.8 cubic inch displacement flathead V8, and the model KB, which rides a longer wheelbase of 145 inches powered by the brand new 447.9 cubic inch displacement flathead V12. Lincoln offered the Model KB first appearing as the Model K in 1931 and was offered with a V8. 1932 Model K line was split into KA and KB. The KA was the V8 model. The KB was the V12 model. It's important to note, Lincoln made three versions of the V12 during this model k era 448 382 414 if you want to learn more about the lincoln v12 we covered it in an engine episode which i will link in the description below for anybody interested in that video in 1934 lincoln would only offer v12s ka and kb would become code for wheelbase lengths 1935, Lincoln would consolidate their offerings to just offering the Model K again. The last year for Model K was 1940. Getting back to the 1932 model year, KB could be had in a plethora of different body styles. Body styles offered from Lincoln included, but not limited to, two window town sedan, three window town sedan, sedan, seven passenger sedan, seven passenger limo, sport touring in this era one could buy the chassis which is the engine transmission running gear dash and you could take it to any coach builder of your choice and have the body put on that you wish lincoln also worked with various coach builders coach builders like and i'll be the first to admit i'm not the best at pronunciations so don't crucify me in the comment section just being transparent brun zetrick Judkins, Willoughby, Waterhouse, LeBaron, Murphy. Our featured car is a Murphy-bodied Roadster, one of five built. But Murphy also offered other cars, such as the Dual Cal Sport Phaeton, Sport Phaeton, and our car, the Sport Roadster. Also worth mentioning that you could take the chassis and have anybody put on a chassis from Murphy. These were the bodies that Lincoln offered in-house built at Murphy. With five being built makes it one of the rarest cars that's ever been featured on this channel. And as the story goes, all the Murphy Sport Roadsters were painted green, like this one. So why is this one gray? The story is, the history is a little bit cloudy, which is understandable with anything close to 100 years old. But the story goes that Edsel Ford, son, the only son of Henry Ford, liked gray so much that he had one of the Murphy Roadsters painted gray. And this is said to be that car. I personally never saw 
a gray car with green interior. I've seen gray with red, which is a really sexy combo, but gray with green, the colors work really well together. This car isn't for sale, but it will be on display at Canton Classic Auto Museum late spring, early summer for you to go up there and check it out. It's definitely worth the drive to go see this car. It's absolutely incredible. Let's talk specs, 214 inches long. It rides a wheelbase of 145 inches. It weighs 5,600 pounds. Price, $6,805, which is equivalent to you spending $154,143.68 in the year 2024. Total 1932 Lincoln production was 3,647 units, pretty much split down the middle. KB was 1,515 units. Of that number, Murphy Roadster was no more than five. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 448 cubic inch displacement V12, 7.3 liters. It's good for 150 horsepower, 3,400 RPM, 292 pound feet or 396 Newton meters at 1,200 RPM with a bore of 3.3 inches and a stroke of 4.5 inches. Compression is 525 to one, seven main bearings. Stromberg DD, two barrel downdraft carburetor. It is backed with a three speed manual transmission. Also worth mentioning, this car has a thermostatically controlled grill, but not just the grill. The louvers on the hood are also thermostatically controlled. Let's talk styling. Starting with these headlights, look at how massive these headlights are. My hand is seven and a half inches long, just for reference. Beautiful horn underneath. Just notice the headlights are connected to this bar right here that goes in between both of the fenders, which give the fender some structural rigidity. Lincoln, nice and proud there. The bumpers are very elegantly styled. Just look at how they are mounted. There is a bead that goes around the fenders. Spoke wheels with Lincoln badge in center. This is riding on Firestone Bias Ply Tires 7.5018. This car has fender markers. Just look at the Greyhound mascot, all the different detail inside. Just check out how these fenders are designed. Has a nice bead that runs on the outside edge and just how it flows down into the running board with the side mounts. This car has louvers and they, could, they work as like a heat extractors. This hood profile is really smooth. It does have a center line that goes up towards the cowl vent. Single piece windshield, but notice how small it is. Once again, my hand for reference. Windshield wipers that follow. Just look at how small those windshield wipers are. side mounts that are mounted inside the fender. Also look at how it connects over here on the side. 
the running boards are massive up front here. I wore a size 12 shoe and it does taper pretty drastically back here. There is a light so you can see the running board at night. This door has four rear hinges. does not have drip rails it does have a real glass window at the back Gary was telling me that this is a disappearing top the top goes underneath this cover when it's down the rear fender just like the front fender has a bead that goes around the edge and then it kicks out at the back here. Look at how these brake lights are designed. License plate rack bracket on top of that. Look at how this is all designed. This car has a rumble seat. as well as a rack to put a luggage rack on if you wish gas filler is on the passenger side these are steps steps to get into the rumble seat this is a golf door so you can put golf bags down here or put groceries through that door if you wish but it's also the footwell of the rumble seat before we get inside just look at that door handle look how art deco it is That's a super nice door. Notice it has this trim on the top, which meets up with the dash here. This looks like real wood. Window crank for the big window, door handle to get out. Notice there is not an armrest on the door panel itself. You can just put your arm up here. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, there's a footwell vent, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. And this is how much access you would have to get in. Just take a look at this dashboard. I don't know what you would call this. Maybe a, it's not really a dash. It's like, but the doors, the trim connects to it. And then dashboard sits up underneath it. And I guess the thought process was there won't be any glares from the sun, but you do kind of get glare from other things. It's just interesting that it sits way up underneath here like that. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood would look like. Let's talk about the steering wheel. It's a bit on the thicker side. I guess you could say it's medium. It's not quite as thick as the 30, it's not quite as thick as a 30 Cadillac, but it's not as thin as a 32 Packard either. Ashtray gear selector, emergency brake. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question, which is already open. It's all felt lined on the inside. 
yeah, it doesn't even fit in the hole. So I'm not going to going to say that it does not fit in the glove box. On to the button switches and knobs, starting at the very bottom left corner, starter button. Three levers on the steering wheel. The bottom one is for the headlights. Center is off. High beam is one way, low beam is the opposite way. Spark advance, gas, choke, oil pressure. Also notice the font used as well as needles in the gauges. Very art deco. Speedometer with odometer at the top, trip at the bottom, amp meter, gasoline gauge, Waltham clock with sweet hand design, coolant temperature, lighter. Under the hood sits an exquisite V12, 447.9 cubic inch displacement, 7.3 liters. It was the biggest V12 made for the buying public, and many Lincoln enthusiasts say this is the best V12 Lincoln ever made. It doesn't have the overheating issues that the later cars did in the 40s. Carburetor is in the center, and notice it's downdraft style. Spark plug wires are inside the tubes that run on top to keep everything clean. The engine alone is a work of art. Notice this engine only has one belt that is driven from the crankshaft up to the fan. Everything else is driven either by chain or gear. On the positive side and final thoughts, this is one of five made exclusivity. His and her glove boxes, which are lined in felt. Awesome dashboard, carpeting throughout, which is really soft. Real wood, seats are super nice and comfortable. And I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent here. I've been in a lot of cars and sometimes for whatever reason, when it comes to the interior and the seats, people, seem to cheap out for whatever. And it doesn't make any sense to me because that's where you spend most of your time, right? At the driver's seat, hopefully. This car was done right. The seats are firm. They don't feel like sitting in a beanbag chair. Real leather, everything is real. And in a way, it's sad because the quality of craftsmanship doesn't exist anymore. Case in point, new aviator, though nice, when compared to this, it feels like a cheap Chinese knockoff. This is a roadster with roll-up windows, a place to hide the top when it's down, mother-in-law seat in the back, golf club door, and probably, not probably, this is the best V12 ever offered under the hood. That was made by Lincoln. The paint on this beauty is so deep, and I've never seen gray as deep as this. When I was walking around the car, you could literally see the thoughts inside my mind. Wow. In the paint, which is absolutely insane. And I just want to take a moment to personally thank Gary and Howard, as well as everybody that came together to bring this car back to its former glory. It's absolutely awesome, and you guys did an incredible job. And you did it right, and it really shows. Against it, exclusivity, but to be fair, that's a lot of cars from 1932. High running cost, high restoration cost. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather three scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1932 Packard Twin 6 or 1932 Lincoln Model KB or 1932 Cadillac V12? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1933 Franklin supercharged air-cooled V12 or... 1932 Lincoln Model KB or 1932 Pierce Arrow V12. Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the final scenario. All 1932 Lincoln coach-built cars. Would you rather have a 1932 Lincoln Dietrich body or Murphy body or Brun? or Judkins. There are others you could feel free to write in if yours isn't listed. Gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. 
If you're still watching, thank you so much for making it to the end. I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description, and if it's not, it's definitely on the homepage. Until next time, toodaloo! 1935 Lincoln model lineup. 1932 Lincoln model lineup was broken down into two models. The KA, which rides a wheelbase of 136 inches, powered by 3.84.8675386753309V8 at 125 horsepower. 384.8 cubic inch displacement V8, which produces 125 horsepower. According to the calculator, it's finally spring. According to the calculator, it's finally spring. Why do I keep saying that? According to the calendar, it's finally spring. Price, $6,805, which is equivalent to you spending $154,143.68 in the year 2024, which would also be equivalent to you buying a 1988 Mercedes 560 SL.